welcome back to my channel. Uh, day like what, 5,000 of quarantine? It feels like it, but it's like the first. I mean, every day of my life right now is quarantine living because I'm always. I'm always secluded and at home anyways, so it's just another day for me. But, uh, I don't know. It just feels weird. It just feels weird, right? There's a weird vibe in the air. Anyways, so, thanks for coming back. If you're new, welcome. If not, well, if you're new, welcome. And also subscribe and like and share. If you're a returning customer, thanks. Alright y'all, so uh, this recipe has been floating around on Facebook, I've seen it a lot. I feel like, cause you know, everyone's crazy, and um, buying everything, and like, oh my god, there's no bread, so I've seen this, um, this bread recipe, right, that you're supposed to be able to make this bread in the crock pot. I don't know if this is true or not, uh, but I'm gonna, we're gonna try it out today, so you can either watch me kill it and we have delicious bread and I can make some french toast or I'm gonna totally just jack it up and you guys can sit here and watch me do it all right so let's get into it it's kind of a lot all right guys so when I played this back and went to go editing this I realized that the audio was just horrific so I'm doing a voiceover through the majority of this video so you don't have to suffer through it <laughs> all right guys so we're right here where I'm picking up basically the beginning of the recipe and what we're doing here is I've got some warm water I realize it's not that warm so I take it back getting some fresh new warm water we're gonna pour it into the bowl here I am pouring it into the bowl yes and then I'm going to add sugar and the yeast to it. Um, the yeast needs the sugar to activate. It's a live active culture, so the sugar, you know, it eats the sugar, it activates, it proofs up, all that good stuff, right? Um, I hope I do this right. <laughs> See, because, okay, I put the sugar in. All right, here comes the yeast. Doo -doo -doo. What if the audio to this, what if this audio is worse than the original audio? I'm doing this for nothing. It's a strong possibility. Anyways, you want to mix it, get it all incorporated, and then you're going to want to let it sit for at least five minutes. Um, I'm also like, you know, using my roadhouse roll making skills in this to make sure I'm doing it right. Um, now I'm going to take butter. You need two cups of milk and two tablespoons of butter. Uh, and it needs to be warm milk and melted butter. So you want to pour your milk in first. Make sure you get exactly two cups in first. And then you're going to add the butter to it. And then I'm going to stick it into the microwave. This has made me realize that I have no patience for my own self to watch this video. Like, girl, hurry up. Melt it already. Jesus. Alright, so I'm sticking it in the microwave for a minute. I come back, I'm talking. I honestly don't remember what I'm talking about at this point. Oh, I think I'm reading the recipe um, because I wrote it down so I wasn't going to be able to like read the screenshot and do the video at the same time so I'm reading the paper. Um, I'm going to post a picture of the screenshot at the end of this somewhere in here to let you know what the ingredients are and what you need to do to make this. So, um, I'm taking out the salt. I'm letting you know that when Whenever you're baking and you're using salt, you want to use the iodized salt. Um, that's kind of like the go-to, unless the recipe specifically says use kosher salt or use this other salt, that salt. You always want to use just regular table salt for that. And you're also going to need some baking powder for this. And what am I doing? Nothing. Oh, I'm remembering that I forgot about the milk. 
and it could have been very bad it could have exploded everywhere but it didn't it's a lot of milk it wasn't melting the blob of butter was still floating on top so I'm gonna stick it back in the microwave for like another two minutes and um, not forget about it see and then when I'm doing all these moving of the camera cuz you know obviously I'm a rookie and I suck at this like you can hear it it's so loud and uh, what am I talking about here I don't know I think I'm saying that um, I read through the comments through this post for this recipe and people were changing it saying you don't need to do this just do that and blah blah but I wanted to make it exactly what the post the original post says to do um, this is me let's see I took did I take the milk out oh no I'm still checking it I think the milk was still kind of it was warm but the butter wasn't melted yet and again when you're warming up your milk you don't want it to be super hot because then it'll kill the yeast and then your bread or whatever you're making with the yeast won't poof up the way it's supposed to so I'm taking the butter out so I can finish melting that and not overheat the milk in the process so here we go melting the butter and then what am I doing oh I'm showing you this is showing you what the yeast is supposed to look like that's what blooming yeast looks like that's that's what it's supposed to do um, so do not be afraid if this is your first time using yeast do not be afraid it's supposed to do that it's not a disease <laughs> that's what yeast does that's what makes bread and well I mean that yeah like you mainly use it for bread that's when your yeast grows that's why they get nice and poofy and airy it's because of the yeast all right so my butter is melted I'm trying to show you but because I lack skills in that area you don't see it so I'm stirring it I want to pour it back into the warm milk and then I'm gonna grab my small little spatula and scrape it in there. I scrape I scrape everything, especially if it's glass. Like I'm scraping everything. Get it out of there. I'm not wasting no food. Alright, so I don't know what I'm talking about here. Probably nothing important. Alright, so mixing. I think I'm gonna finally pour it into the yeast. Oh no, this is where I can't decide if I want to pour it in yet because I didn't set a timer for my yeast. So I'm hesitant as to if the yeast is ready for me to pour it in there or not. I don't know. I'm looking, I'm getting, I think I'm about to get a measuring cup for my flowers. For the flour to, you know, measure it, I'll put it into the mixer, whatnot. Do -do -do. I'm back, I found the measuring cup, but I washed it out. And all that good stuff. All right. This is me still debating if I want to put it in the yeasted. I don't know what I'm talking about. <sighs> I don't remember what I was talking about here. Now I now I want to know what I'm talking about, but I can't stop it or anything because it's gonna mess everything up. Oh, I'm talking about homeschooling, that's what I'm talking about, and how, uh, yeah, I don't know how teachers do it, because that is rough, like, <laughs> I'm talking about me being that meme where you're, like, yelling at your kid, and you're both crying because you don't know what you're doing. Anyways, back to it, I'm still trying to figure out if it's, if I should pour it in yet, is the yeast ready? I didn't put a timer. What do I do? I don't know. It was probably ready, but I decided to put a two-minute timer. Uh, to make sure so my groovy dance I'm waiting thumbs up <laughs> trying to look skinny not happening and then I remember at a time when I tried to use the microwave for a timer but for like 10 minutes and it almost exploded and it was scary 
and I don't know why I did that. This is me still telling the story. Okay, okay. This is me debating if there's a timer on a microwave. No, there isn't. There's one on my stove, but I wasn't going to use it. Waiting a little longer. I don't remember what I'm talking about here. I do not know. Oh, I think I'm talking about, okay, so once you're finished doing that, you put it in your crock pot and you're supposed to let it cook or whatever for like two and a half, two to two and a half hours. Okay, I stopped the timer, cool. All right, now I'm about to pour this milk in. Finally, Jesus H Christ. Scraping. Okay, and then I'm fixing to add the salt and the baking powder into it first. A teaspoon of salt. No, it's two teaspoons of salt. And then one teaspoon of the baking powder that's going to go in there. The post didn't say anything about a specific order and how to put it in there. I just kind of dumped everything in. comes the baking powder. The baking powder I put through a little mini sifter because it was kind of like lumpy and hard and I don't want like a lump of baking powder somewhere in the middle of the bread. So when you sift it, it gets all the lumps out, everything smooth. See this is me like, uh, uh, no, let me get the sifter. Just throw it in there. Aren't I nifty? I just had everything like ready to go. Well, kind of. All right, so put it through the sifter. And then I'm about to start measuring the flour to put in there. So I did three cups of all purpose flour and three cups of whole wheat flour only because I had, I had bought whole wheat flour for another recipe like for the holidays. And I literally only used like two cups out of it and I still had the big bag there so I was like I need to find a way to use this and this was perfect uh, you can do you know all total is six cups of flour so you can do you know six cups of the whole wheat you can do six cups of the all-purpose or do it like I did half and half so this is me just dumping in it probably would have been smart to like do it portion it, have it all together at once and just dump it in all at once. But you know, <laughs> I kind of decided to do this like last minute. So I'm getting all the flowers in there. All right. So I think I'm going to speed this part up right here. Speed up, speed up, speed up. And then so after I get all the flowers in there, I, oh, I let it mix and I let it mix until it kind of starts to like make a weird noise and at that point I realized that, you know, it's too thick. <laughs> Again, you should use, a, if your mixer has a hook, use that and that would like definitely be way better. I only have the paddle. I will invest in a hook one day. So, all right, so once I stopped it, I hope I can line this up correctly. <laughs> the timing, it's gonna be weird. So if it gets weird guys, just, you know, bear with me here. All right, so I mixed it enough. It all came together into one big hump, you know, one big dough ball kind of. So at this point I dumped it out onto my counter and then I was just going to knead, knead it get it all incorporated check out my kneading skills yes yes kneading skills 
skills and don't be afraid to need it um like i said you know when i used to make bread for roadhouse we would actually like have it in a mixer for 15 minutes so you know kneading it for a couple minutes with your hands is perfectly fine don't be scared i was just trying to get all the you know some parts were really wet and sticking to my hands and other parts were super dry so i was just trying to get everything into one consistent ball of dough all right and so basically after we do this i'm gonna get it into the you put a piece of parchment paper into your crock pot you put the dough in there and then you put it into the crock pot put it on high for two to two and a half hours um and okay so i think i'm going to end the recording here and then get back to the original video because i don't think it's that bad at this point all right cool So this is my insert for the crock pot. And I'm like this is parchment paper. And I put my bottle dough. It didn't say to like spray the paper or anything or I was just gonna hope that it peeled off nicely. This is what it looks like. Yay! So coming over here, and then we're gonna stick this on there. Right here, tiny little woman hospital. All right, so it says to put it and put it on high for two and a half hours. It's three thirty. I'm gonna put a timer on my phone because I'm gonna mess it up over here. All right, guys. So I'm gonna come in, check in with y'all, let you know how it comes out. Cross your fingers. Okay. See you in a little bit. All right. Guys, so it has been two hours. Ew. Where's my light? <laughs> it's been two hours since we uh, since I put the bread in the crock pot. My timer just went off. It is now 5.30. So we're gonna take a look at it. Oh, now the instruction says that, um, I'm gonna put a picture of the post here. It says to, it's ready when the top is like dry and spring, like it's spread, it's not mushy or anything. So we're gonna check it out. All right. I only intended it. Jesus. Let's see how it is. How am I going to do this? This is how excited I am. that 
it was gonna be um like mushy or like it wasn't gonna work. But let's see. Hold on, hold on. Maybe that's the perfect. I got this thing. Remember, remember kids, you always want to use a serrated knife when you cut bread. Don't be trying to use no chef's knife, no straight edge knife because you're just going to mush the bread down. Pro tip. Alright. Oh, I'm going to get you excited guys. good like a grilled cheese would be with this or to make croutons out of it oh my god look it's like perfectly done it's still kind of hot out yeah. see look, look at the bottom it got all toasty looks like it got toastier than the other but it's like hard that is so cool that's it yay Alright guys, thanks for, thanks for tuning in to my quarantine eats. I wish I can get like, I wish one time I can get like a really good like outro intro without like extraness over there. One day, right? I can dream. But uh, yeah. Yay, it worked and I didn't fail. Okay, I'll fix it right now. Right now. Okay. All right, guys. So that was it. Uh, I'm gonna think of other stuff to make and record it on that. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, share, tell all your friends, tell everybody you can make bread in the crock pot because it just happened and it's really good. All right. Bye.